Hi, this is Sanjay Gangal from AEC Cafe. I'm here with Hans Martinsdorf, Business Director, Total Stations at Leica Geosystems, which is part of Hexagon. Uh, hello, Hans Martin. Hi, Sanjay. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so tell us about uh, the Leica AP20 Autopole. Well, the Leica AP20 Autopole is an absolute unique uh, solution, which we have just uh, announced uh, a couple of days ago. The AP20 is a unique, uh, it boosts up the productivity of our total station users and is absolutely easy to use. Uh, when we develop product solutions at Leica Geosystems, we always want to address actually customer challenges, customer problems, which occur today uh, when they do their work. And with the AP20, we actually address three main customer challenges, uh, which uh, occur today when uh, customers as well as users using total stations in the total station workflow. Uh, the first challenge is uh, when you measure with total stations, actually you need to hold the prism pole always vertical. So this uh, slows up uh, the measurement process. It, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if you have tried by yourself that as well, mm -hmm. but uh, every single way you knows that uh, he needs to level bob the, the level bubble and it brings the bubble into the center so that the pole is exactly vertical and then he can measure its speed. But it's also limiting uh, the measurement area because you always set up the pole over a point which you want to measure. And if you have an obstacle above, you cannot measure the point. So uh, this verticality of the pole is uh, a big uh, challenge today. The second uh, challenge which we are going to address with our AP20 auto pole is actually the automatic pole height uh, uh, reading. Respectively today, when you measure uh, the, the, the pole height, you always need to enter it manually into the field software. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, very error prone and uh, can cause uh, quite cumbersome and time consuming post-processing. And if you can actually fix it in a post-processing, you might be even lucky. Quite often you need to go again into the field and redo your measurements. And the third uh, challenge, which we are going to address with the AP20 is uh, the that it can happen, uh, especially when you have several surveying crews working on the same deck, same site at the same spot, that the total station locks onto the wrong target. And uh, this we are going to address as well with the AP20. So the AP20 addresses these three customer challenges with its three features functionalities like the tilt compensation, the automatic pole height reading, as well as the unique target ID. Okay, uh, so, uh, so I think uh, you mentioned the challenges and uh, that, that led you to uh, uh, design this and, and, and create this uh, new uh, auto poll. And, and uh, uh, so I'm assuming uh, it has addressed all, the, all of these three challenges and uh, what benefits uh, does this automated solution provide to the industry professionals in their daily workflow? Exactly. Uh, the AP20 addresses these three main uh, challenges, the pole verticality, the, the pole height reading, as well as the target ID in one, uh, one product. We have different variants of the product, but uh, the full solution actually addresses all three in one, uh, one product. And the benefits, uh, I mean, for the, for the tilt compensation for our customers is, uh, I mean, uh, speed. Uh, it does not need any more to level the pole, so it speeds up the, the measurement process, so time savings over the day. Uh, it's also uh, extending the measurement range, so means you can now with a tilted pole measure much more points, much more uh, objects than you could not measure before. I mean, just imagine just measuring the edge of a house today is not so easy because you, you cannot level the pole uh, at the edge of, of a house when you might want to measure that. Uh, and now with the tilt pole, you just can put the pole, pole tip to that edge and it gets measured by, by the total station. So it's speed, you can measure more points. And another important aspect is as well safety. Uh, safety, whether this is on the construction side or whether this is along a busy road, 
I mean, when you have to focus on the level bubble, you, you, you focus on the level bubble, but you should actually focus where you walk or mm. maybe you have a lot of traffic. So you, you need to be careful where you walk. And now with, uh, with removing the level bubble, uh, you can focus on where you walk or, or as well on the traffic. And due to the speed increase, you can actually leave a dangerous site uh, even quicker than before. So that's the, the advantage for the tilt compensation. Now, when we come uh, to the automatic pole height reading, I mean, uh, as a surveyor, when, when, when you work a day long, you experience uh, quite often that you have, kind of, we call it line of sight interruption. When you measure with the total station, you always need a line of sight between the total station and the prison. Now it can happen that for instance, the car, uh, drives by or you have a, a Bosch where you need to measure behind the Bosch. And for this, you, you need to adjust the pole height. So your reflector height changes. And now, as I said before, uh, today uh, you need to enter it manually and often it can happen that you forget it. With the AP20, uh, you just adjust the pole height and everything is done automatically for you. So it, uh, it gets updated in the software directly. Uh, means uh, speeds up the process, but it's uh, much, much less error prone and uh, removes the cumbersome time consuming post processing. And even uh, today, uh, I mean, when you measure with total stations, you, you have two setups, you measure uh, robotically, that means a one person setup, so you can steer the total station robotically and it follows your prism, you're at the pole side. And then you are even today a little bit better on the control which pole height you enter. But quite often, uh, surveyors uh, out in the field, they, they measure in the so-called two-person mode. So, so we have two persons. One person stands at the total station. The other person uh, stands at the pole. Now uh, the, the trouble starts when the person at the pole side changes the pole height. He needs somehow to communicate that to the person at the total station. And uh, either he, he probably shouts or he uses a walkie-talkie. But on, on busy construction side, loud uh, roads, loud construction side, uh, it's difficult to transmit this, this, uh, these values. So again, very error prone. And this gets solved with the AP20. Okay. Last okay. but not least, mm -hmm. uh, the target ID. Uh, here, uh, uh, we, we, with the target ID functionality of the AP20, we ensure on, as well on busy construction side and several crews are on site, that uh, the total station really locks onto your target uh, and you can continue with your layout, with your measurements and ensure that the total stations measures on the right target. Okay, and uh, um, in the press release, I, I did notice that uh, you also mentioned uh, that you're able to lock into a foreign target uh, on a site with multiple reflectors. Uh, so tell us about that. Uh, you probably mean uh, you are now able to that we can lock in onto your target, even though mm -hmm. if you have multiple reflectors standing around. I mean, today a, t a total station uh, uh, sends out the laser, and it's mm -hmm. it's uh, wherever is a target, it gets reflected, and the total station needs to know uh, this is is this now my target or, or or the wrong target which I need to ignore. Mm -hmm. And now uh, in combination with this unique target ID, which we have on, on the AP20, the total station reflects that signal as well. And it knows, ah, that's my target. And it locks onto the target where, where it should, despite as well, there are other targets, other moving targets around on site. And uh, we have that uh, often, uh, as I said before, on, on, on construction sites, on, on decks, when they build large houses, uh, time is critical uh, and often uh, these contractors which are working there, they, they measure with several total stations, several crews work in parallel. And therefore it's very crucial that uh, the crew is as much productive as possible. And therefore the target ID helps them to find and lock quicker onto their target. And how does the AP20 auto poll complement the Leica Geosystems existing total station portfolio? Uh, the Leica AP20 Autopol can be uh, used uh, together with our latest generation of total stations, the TS16, MS60, TS60. So uh, by having a, a software upgrade, uh, our customers are also uh, able to use the equipment uh, which they have bought a couple of years ago. 
just so it, it, it's a, an upgrade to the existing one. But as well, for sure, uh, I mean, if, if you buy a new total station, you can immediately use it together with the AP20. So it, it complements the, the total station portfolio as and makes it as a very smart solution, uh, total stations together with uh, the unique autopole uh, uh, solution. Okay. And uh, what is the best way for our audience to find out more about uh, AP20 autopole on the internet? Mm -hmm. I mean, please uh, visit our website, www.leica-geosystems.com. And there you find all the information about Autopol. You find also uh, interviews or expert insights where our experts talk about uh, the AP20 in more depth, in, uh, in a more technical way, how the AP20 works. And uh, yeah, that's the best way to get additional and more information about the AP20. Yeah. And Hans Martin, is it okay if I ask you a couple of personal questions? Sure, yeah. Uh, so what do you do for fun outside work or what is your personal passion? My personal passion, I mean, uh, I have a family. Uh -huh. I have uh, two kids. So they take quite a, a lot of time for me when I'm outside of work, but I have uh, two other passions. And uh, my first passion is skiing. I love to ski. I'm, I'm, a, I'm Swiss, so uh, every Swiss can, can ski. Uh, and I love to ski in winter time. And in uh, summer or springtime, now it started. I love to do uh, mountain bike tours as well as uh, I do uh, race bikes, road bikes, biking. So these are my two uh, passions. And I try now with my kids as well to, to uh, to do these passions together so that we can do them uh, as a family together. That's, uh, and uh, how old are your kids? My kids are, uh, my daughter is getting four very soon and my uh, son is uh, eight. Wow. So I You're need fun, to, uh, to catch up with skiing so he gets uh, almost faster <laughs> than me uh, very soon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are your favorite ski destinations? I, uh, I like uh, most uh, eastern part of Switzerland, uh, Engadin, maybe you've heard the uh, most famous mm -hmm. cities there, uh, St. Moritz. So I go a little bit close to that and it's, it's gorgeous. Very good snow as well as uh, nice mountains. Okay. okay. Yeah, can you also tell us something about yourself, uh, Hans Martin, that most people at Leica Geosystems who work with you don't know about you? And um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, they know a lot about me, but maybe what they don't know is uh, I started to brew beer. Mm. <laughs> During uh, you know the lockdown, uh, COVID actually made that uh, we, we we got a group in our in the village where I live, and I uh, we started together uh, once a while to start uh, to brew our own beer and drink our own beer. So uh, that got a little bit uh, a passion within the last uh, I would say few very few years. And oh. this, uh, I guess, I uh, don't know everyone uh, yet uh, in the company. Uh, I would love to taste your beer. Uh, what type of beer do you brew? Yeah, it's uh, actually, it was uh, our first one was very good. We did an Ember. It was so good so that we did not know, shall we do another one or not? So, <laughs> so we decided to do an API. Now, uh, uh, that was, uh, was good as well. Uh, and now we see what comes uh, comes next. But it makes fun to brew uh, in a group, so it's it's a, it's an evening event. And finally, but, um, yeah, uh, one simple question: uh, yeah. cats or dogs? Cats. I have a cat at home, so uh, cats. It's a. Uh, uh, almost self-maintaining. You don't need to do a lot. So just give a little bit to eat, and uh, the rest is uh, the cat doing by by herself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true that's true what type of cat do you have oh uh, it's a, you know it's a uh, you know uh, we, we call it a street mix i, I don't know it's it's uh, any kind of uh, mix it looks like a little bit the tiger uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a girl and uh, but she got old she's almost 10 years now but oh. uh, she's part of the family and uh, the the kids love her Oh, that's, that's great, Ted. Uh, thank you so much, Hans Martin, for taking time to record this interview. Have a great day and stay safe. You're very welcome. You too. Bye-bye, Sanjay. Bye. Okay. This is Sanjay Gangal from AEC Cafe.